Welcome to this edition of Going Beyond. I'm your host, Chris Kramer, President and CEO of Beyond Housing. Today, we're going to hear the rest of the story from folks in Normandy, particularly young folks who have been at uh, the Normandy school systems from their beginning at kindergarten to now their senior year in high school. Joining me on today's show are Joyce McGrath, longtime uh, civic and community leader and a parent of children in the district. We have Kashari Bugs, we have Drew Foster, and we have Robert McGrath. Thank you all for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Joyce, let's start with you. You've a former school board member, longtime resident, longtime parent. Robert is your son. He will be graduating like uh, other children. So give folks a little bit of perspective about having a child at Normandy from kindergarten to now. It's been some challenging times, but we don't think the whole story always gets out about what's happening at the schools and what's happening in the community. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Well, Robert started, of course, at Jefferson School at kindergarten, and uh, he has had a wonderful experience. I think I think I give a little credence to that, the fact that when there wasn't something going right, I showed up at the school. I know at Jefferson, a lot of people thought, okay, is she part of the furniture here? Because she's here so much. But I was a very involved parent. You know, I knew I had to show up in my kid's life and, you know, went on field trips, you know, sat in the classroom, that kind of thing. But, you know, teachers only have kids for so long. And then after that day, you know, you have to come into a home life. And so... Getting homework done, getting chores done, all that, that was part of the process in the McGrath household. He just knew that he had to do that. Coupled with that, he was in Boy Scouts, you know, the whole time. So that was very rewarding as well. So I know that there's a lot of perception out there. And I guess if you don't dispel that, it becomes reality. But Normandy was a great place to raise my kids, and especially in the school system. And the McGrath household wasn't the only one who was engaged, active, uh, and involved in the child's educational life. That's exactly right. Let's move on to the, the young folks here in the room. So we'll start with Kashari, we'll go to Drew, and then we'll go to Robert. So if you could tell our listeners a little bit about kind of, you know, you're about to graduate. So tell a little bit about kind of what's next, but also a little bit about, you know, your experience at the Normandy schools from uh, kindergarten to now your senior year. Well, I started at Lucas Crossing. It was a good learning experience. I helped my teacher because I was a little more advanced than other students. So that was fun. Right now, it's not so well with the district losing a lot of teachers. So I feel like I'm missing out on great learning experience right now as a senior. But I plan to go to college, Mizzou, and do engineering and stay within the music program. Fantastic. How about you, Drew? Well, I went to Jefferson with Robert, and it was very fun. I did enjoy it. I have recently kind of been feeling the same way as Kashari with the education that we receive is really just not the same no more with everything that's been going on since like our sophomore year. But I guess we just try to keep positive and do everything we can to help. As far as the future, I will be attending UMSU in the fall, and I am also majoring in engineering. Fantastic. Last but not least, Mr. McGrath, just tell us you know, a little about what's happening next in your life, and then kind of about your experience at being at Normandy from kindergarten to now your senior year. So in the Normandy School District, I have been a honorable student basically my whole life. That was attributed to good parenting and making sure I have my grades right. And studying hard and uh, just kind of also self-motivation because I'm pretty competitive. Once I found out that there are other people who are just as bright as I am, I wanted to make sure I was, I guess, the brightest or whatever. And I just kind of have like a not really natural sense, but pretty good at math and sciences. Well, those are my favorite subjects. If you fly a plane that I'm ever on later (laughs) in life, I want to make sure that, yeah, you're really good at math and science. So, yeah, math and science and stuff was always my favorite besides music. And I know that there is a an expanding field of math and science careers out there. So the best way to make sure I know I have a job in the future, a well-paying job at that, is to be in the math and science field. And people always are traveling around the world, around the country. And so I wanted to be a pilot. And so I just always have a job. And it's fun being up in the air. It's a lot of responsibility, but and also it's very disciplined. Yeah. I don't want my pal having too much fun. Right. 
A little bit of fun is fine. I don't want the pilot having too much fun. Let's maybe go back to something that both Kashari and Andrew touched on. That was the last couple of years, you know, obviously the district's been going through a fair amount of chaos, you know, from accreditation issues, financial issues, the state taking over. And, you know, Kashari, you mentioned particularly this year has been a challenge because of all the changes. Maybe you guys talk to us a little bit more about that because I think sometimes folks on the outside don't really understand, you know, some of the chaos that you guys had to struggle through, right? You're a student, come to school, you obviously are great students and, you know, you want a good education and you want something a little bit maybe better than the adults who were in charge were able to provide for you for the last uh, three years. Talk a little bit about that if you could. Okay. All of us are honor and AP students. And this year, our teachers weren't certified. So we lost the honors and AP programs. And we were mixed with other students other than the honor students. And they tend to play and joke and not be interested in learning. And our teachers were kind of fed up. So some of our teachers don't take attendance anymore or even want to teach because they get so frustrated. And some teachers barely show up to work and they have to pull other teachers to... Did you guys lose a lot of the teachers you had before in the Uh, last couple of years? Have you lost some of what you thought were the better teachers? Yes, most definitely. Right. So again, for our listeners, you may have heard a lot of different things about, you know, some of the challenges and changes. And you probably only heard the beginning stories about, you know, the state taking over and a lot of other things. And what you're hearing now is attempts at adults to try to make education better for the children of Normandy didn't quite accomplish that, at least not here in in the transition period. Drew, in any sense from you, kind of how things have changed? Obviously, you've persevered through, but you give our listeners a little thoughts of, you know, kind of what's happened the last couple of years. The end, that's when everything kind of got confused and we were just kind of like, you know, debating if what my mother was, if she should keep me and my little sister in the school district. And I was just like begging because I was like, mom, I done did 11 plus or whatever years. And I just don't want to leave all my friends that I grew up with or whatever. So that was kind of hard. I dealt with that for a while. It's just, yeah, the learning experience changed and we done been through so much. It's just. If you could go back to your sophomore year, what would you have rather have seen happen than, than what happened? What would have been a preference? I don't know where to start because I just heard rumors that it was administrators. Then I heard it was our fault. And for the longest, I just was like, it's because I'm not getting this type of grade. I'm not. Well, I attend, you know, I have perfect attendance, but, you know, and try to. Here, I'll be clear. It was not your fault. <laughs> Any of your fault. Let's get that clear. It's all the adults who have been in charge for a lot of years that just didn't take care of business the way that they could have or should have. Not that it was an easy task, but clearly don't for a second think it was any of you or, or your peers' fault. Again, the adults who are in charge are making sure you guys get the best education possible. And sadly, collectively, and I'll say we because I'm an adult too, we didn't do a good enough job making that happen. So let's be clear, you know, we let you down. And for that, we need to do better. So I know Joyce and many others in the community are trying, but we're trying to change a system that doesn't like to change. So we're in the process of making a change, hopefully the way that will be beneficial to your younger sister. And hopefully if she stays by the time she gets to be where you're at, things will be a little bit better. All right, Joyce, let's talk a little bit about, there's a bunch of stuff that's already going on that I know you want to talk a little bit about so folks know that Normandy's not out of the woods yet. There's still some significant challenges and problems, including another bill in the state legislature that, again, could not necessarily help Normandy. I'm going to tell folks a little bit about that and some of the things that have been going on from a community perspective. Okay. And thank you, Drew. I appreciate you mentioning about the whose fault it was. When adults get involved with stuff, yeah, it gets messy. And I'm speaking even as a former school board member. I guess I've never even would have signed up had I known that, you know, seven people couldn't see eye to eye, you know. I mean, our only employee was the superintendent. And it was like, you know, administration and teachers and students, you know, they all flock at you like, you know, you're supposed to change things and you know, one vote, one person couldn't do a whole lot. But again, the whole adult thing got real, real messy. And that's never good, never good for children. So I apologize to you students for any of that time that we served there. But on the flip side of that, yeah, there's a House bill right now, House Bill 42, that says, you know, hey, guys, all you need to do is come up with a formula that says we need a flat rate for this transfer bill to work. When I was sitting on that board serving as treasurer, I know for a fact there's $19 million in reserve, and the state only requires that you have 3%. So now we have bare-bones budget, and 
all this money is leaving the district. I mean, you guys know each other, the students sitting here today, but there's so many students that my next door neighbor gets to take advantage of the transfer program. Never, ever set foot in Normandy schools, ever. Has always gone to private school. This year he goes to high school. So it's like, oh, I could go up to Normandy and just be part of the transfer program because this is where my mom and dad pay taxes. That's just so unfair. So if you're going to put a cap on the class size, then you can also put a mandatory cap on tuition. It just seems like a no brainer to me, but I'm not a legislator. All right. So again, what the House bill won't do is put a low enough cap. They are lowering the payment somewhat, but everything I've heard from the folks at the Normie School Collaborative is that they're still going to be really financially challenged, even with um, some of the changes that the legislature is making, meaning they're going to allow folks to only pay 70% of their tuition versus 100%. Well, clearly 70% is better, better but right. if Normie's still going to go broke, it doesn't make a difference. So again, to your point, Joyce, about you know if folks really want to help and fix is give a flat rate and make yeah. it be affordable. And the, the, the other piece again, and, and sometimes people don't like when you talk about the past because, you know, like, oh, let's move to the future. But here's the reality. As you said, as treasurer, normally manage their money well. Absolutely. Um, they had 19 million in reserves and that 19 million is now gone. They're right. And a lot of that money got paid to Francis Howe, Clayton, Ledoux, and a whole bunch of other folks, you know, who took full tuition, even though they didn't need it to educate the children of Normandy and when they showed up. So clearly many challenges ahead. If you guys could, each of you, you know, leave our listeners with something about what they should know about Normandy, what they should know about the students of Normandy, what they should know about, you know, the community. Because, again, most folks in the region, you know, just get a few headlines and then think they understand and move about their business. If, could you guys give us something you want folks to keep in their mind when they when, next time they hear anything about the Normandy schools? Robert, we'll start with you. What, what do you want our listeners to know? What was something you think they don't understand? So with our Normandy students, much like myself, of course, what is not showed or portrayed in like everyday media or what they hear most of the time is that us students, we are really trying and I know uh, to some people trying isn't good enough. You want us to just do it. But given our circumstances and our resources, trying is like the best thing we can do right now. Because instead of trying to turn Normandy around, some students could just say, forget it all and drop out and do whatever God knows what that they want to do. Instead of trying, they could just maybe not drop out, but just stay in class and just act a fool and not care about anything. Yes, there are some students who do that, but for the majority, there are those that who are honestly trying to turn around the stereotype that has been portrayed for Normandy. So, All right. Drew, how about you? I guess the stereotype of just being like, what was that? I think 2012, the most dangerous school that killed me. Because I just was like, not everybody fights. Is fighting going on at every school? I just feel like I don't know why we were just put on a pedestal when we're just like every other district in the county. I just want you guys to know, like Robert said, we do try and don't judge us from the decisions or the situation we're going through with the district and help, I guess, you know. Okay. Kashari? Well, I just wanted to say not to listen to the media because they blow everything out of proportion. They focus on our failures and not our success. And to come and see for yourself that us Normandy kids are just like any other students, just trying to learn and make our life better and accomplish goals. Joyce? Well, uh, this past weekend would have been a really good opportunity for the media to be at Viking Hall. We had a wonderful production of The Wiz, and shout out to Dwayne Foster. Fine Arts Department. He collaborated with the whole district. I mean, these were elementary students from the uh, elementary schools, from the middle school, from, of course, at the high school. I mean, everybody participated. And it was including just beautiful. Y- including young Mr. Including McGrath. Including young Mr. McGrath. Who had, a, and, had uh, at least two parts, I think. And Chris Shari was, was definitely the uh, stage manager. So, you know, making sure lights and audio and all that was focused. So, Oh, and even Drew, I mean, because the band played the background. So that was really, really awesome. But there are moments like that that don't get captured. Of course, they came when Marsalis was in town. Yeah, well, that was good media hype. But just the everyday, you know, Normandy kids doing what they do. 
we don't show up for that. So that's yeah, unfortunate. But I do want to give a big shout out to Beyond Housing as well, because you've been a very big champion for this district over years and even, you know, providing the buses. And we went up to Jeff City just even on April the 1st for the Children's Advocacy Day. And that was very helpful. I got the, a chance myself to drop some little notes into a lot of representatives boxes <laughs> just saying, hey, well, if you don't fix this problem. There are going to be a lot of little black kids showing up at the door in your district, you know. So, you know, and you can take that for what it's worth. That's a good thing for some people. And some people are like, mm, maybe not. We better fix this thing. So that's my two cents. The rest of the story about the Normandy School District from Joyce McGrath, Kashari Bugs, Drew Foster, and Robert McGrath. Thank you guys for being on the show. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. 